The key figure in this mythic dynamic is Osiris, or Osiris Ra, a sun god in his own right that lives and thrives, however, underwater, within the hollowed Sektet Aru, field of reeds. Osiris, the Greek pronunciation for the Egyptian title Asar, is a word whose exact meaning is unknown. But the hieroglyphic spelling of the god's name includes the image of a solar eye motif and a throne, both of which elements have a direct bearing on his mythic and iconographic roles and physical constitution. One of several descriptive suffixes to Osiris' title, Unnefer, Osiris Unnefer, implies that this god opens Un to beauty, Nefer, which obviously relates to the name of Osiris's great-grandfather, Nefertum, his name meaning Nefer, beauty, Atum, completed. And to be sure, Osiris, being a denizen of the Nilotic field of reeds, shares close symbolic associations with Nefertum's floral identity. Indeed, lotus flowers habitually spring to life around and sometimes directly from his throne and underworld coffin. As a god of the dead and a lord over the field of reeds, Osiris is normally portrayed in the form of a human king that has been mummified, whether he stands upright or lays to rest in the hidden world of the Amentet. but he can also take the form of a bull, in which case he usually wears the double plume disc crown of Nefertum. As an anthropomorphized god, he dons two versions of this crown, one of which is formed by two plumes and a disc, which we have identified as a symbol of a water lily bud, whose petals reflects to form a winged disc, but another crown, a variation on the double plume crown, is called the Atif. This headpiece places the conical white crown of Upper Egypt between two upright blue ostrich feathers. This additional element, sometimes bearing a lotus blossom and or a golden disc, sometimes both, at its tip. Two flanking discs, are occasionally observed at the base of the Atef crown, or on the heads of two serpents that dangle from the central disc, these presumably representing the thrice-revealed golden pistillate discs of a lotus flower. Osiris shares this crown with his heir to the throne, his alter ego in the land of the living, and that would be Horus or Horus Ra. And like Nefertum, Osiris is a god of creation, even if he does belong to the realm of the eternally dead. He conserves this role with his dependable penis, which is brought to life recurrently by his sister and mate, Isis. The phallus of Osiris Ra, his signatory organ, is symbolized by the ubiquitous Jed, or Tet, symbol. This being an upright shaft that typically sustains three or four superimposed golden crowns, which are viewed and profiled, upon which we frequently observe the double-plumed disc crown. When this phallus reaches to the sky, the crown, representing an incipient flower, will open itself as Asar Unnefer, Osiris, opening to beauty. This title basically identifies him as his beautiful floral offspring, Horus. But the Jed pillar is generally symbolic of a drowned stock whose three discs have descended into the underworld to await rejuvenation, while the Ururet crown 
atop symbolizes the promise of his eventual return to the fields of Ra in the sky as his son Horus. Hence the Jed often lays down on the back of Osiris's coffin as the deceased god awaits his rejuvenation. And while even Horus and Ra share his same phallus and crown, the Jed column is the quintessential symbol of Osiris. To quote the papyrus of Ani, diademed like Ra, verily I come to see you, Osiris, and to rejoice at your beauties. Ra's disk is your disk. His rays of light are your rays of light. His Ururet crown is your Ururet crown. His odor is your odor. His hidden place is your hidden place, etc. So Osiris is Ra, but Ra as a hidden sun in the aquatic underworld, with, apparently, a very agreeable odor. This is a very ancient mythic construct in Egypt, as early pyramid texts state overtly that both of these gods, Osiris and Ra, inherit the divine aspects of their primordial creator, the lotus god Nefertum, whose sweet perfume is placed at the nose of Ra. To quote Utterance 537, which describes the reincarnation of a deceased king as Osiris, Elevate yourself, O king, and take your seat on the throne of Osiris. You are the flesh of Atum. So stand up so that you don't perish and never be destroyed. Live, O king, and may you be like a vital scarab beetle, and may you be everlasting as the Jed pillar for eternity. For a deceased king is bound to become Osiris in, it, in the afterlife. As he enters the Nile's mythic island of fire and resurfaces in the afterlife, pyramid text utterance 249 states that he, as Nefertum, quote, as a lotus blossom, which is ever at the nose of Ra. It seems that the Jed pillar was a very popular talisman because we encounter the amulet throughout Egypt and wherever the Egyptians wandered beyond the fertile valleys of the Nile. The Jed column was also employed widely as an altarpiece and a ritual implement in religious celebrations. In the palaces of pharaohs at Abydos and Dendra, for example, where Osiris was worshipped for millennia, the Jed was a feature in sacred celebrations. This practice may have possibly been involved in fertility rites because in Egyptian mythology, the fertile member of Osiris is sought perpetually by his sister and consort, the fertility goddess Isis, such that she might conceive her solar offspring, Horus, a sun-like flower of the Amentet, and essentially the living coescence of his father. One of Osiris's many titles was Kenti Amentet, or leader of the mysterious aquatic underworld, where the Jed pillar awaited rebirth and consecration eternally. Osiris and his drowned phallus are beseeched constantly in mythic scenes to stand up, to stand up so that his son Horus might once again attain to lordship as a solar eye in the sky. This mythic theme of the Osirian cycle is symbolized by one of the most iconic of all Egyptian forms, an object that many Mediterranean kings would eventually come to covet. And that is the obelisk, a symbol of Osiris's phallus which erects itself to create his son, Horus Ra, a sun-like flower, 
which takes flight from his father's shaft. When Horus extends his wings, or reflexes the blue plumes of his double-plumed crown, the golden disk of the living sun god comes to full flourishing. Or so it would seem when we take a closer look at the Nilotic Lotus. It is increasingly evident to me that Egyptian sun gods actually signify two luminous entities of the Egyptian cosmos, one of which is the solar disk on the Egyptian horizons, but more often than not, the luminosity of the gods derives from the sun-like flowers that open daily to the rising of the sun along the aquatic horizons of the Nile River, where the proverbial fields of Ra, the fields of reed, witness the rise and fall of Osiris and Horus on a daily basis. As one coffin text notes, 96, when Geb opens the door for Osiris on the banks of Hu, I quote, It was Ra who made the soul of Osiris, and it was Osiris that made the soul of Ra, whence the title Osiris-Ra. And no less the soul of Horus, Osiris's reincarnation, whose own splendor is returned to his father to occupy the forehead of Ra, as suggested in the Papyrus of Ani. I quote, I have delivered the eye of Horus, which shines with splendor on the forehead of Ra, the father of the gods. I am the same, Osiris, the dweller in Amentet. Osiris knows his day, and he shall live through the period of life. Stand up, therefore, O Horus. Osiris' act of standing erect coincides with Horus's act of attaching his eye to Osiris at the site where his father was drowned. So let's delve deeper into the Osirian cycle of the Heliopolitan view of cosmogenesis and see just how the Nile's water lily might fit into the ensuing drama of life and death. Pyramid text 254 identifies the pillar of Osiris as an upholder of the eye, but in the image of a celestial bull, while making, as a pyramid text expresses the theme, making lapis lazuli grow after sprouting upward as a twin plant, presumably the lotus, of Upper Egypt. The same bull accepts the efflux, the watery exudate that emanates from Horus's eye when he, the pillar of the serpent's sight, ferries over the fields of Ra for eternity in Pyramid Text 436. The papyrus of Unnefer describes Osiris in this cryptic fashion. Your body is of bright and shining metal. Your head the color of azure blue, and a brilliance of turquoise encircles you. These glancing and nebulous allusions to a sprouting plant that makes lapis lazuli grow as a brilliant encircling of turquoise must surely relate to the lotus, since Osiris lives in the fields of Ra. This suggestion has wholesale support from iconographic records, which occasionally portray Osiris as a cosmic bull that strides across the water lily fields of Ra. Now the bull was a symbol of power in ancient Egypt, and often in Mesopotamia as well. And in Egypt, this power belonged to Osiris. That very power was a possession that provoked the covetous and murderous intentions of Osiris's brother, known as Seth. Ultimately, Seth's attempts to usurp the throne of Osiris resulted, paradoxically, in the immortalization of life and natural order on earth. Osiris is constantly compelled to stand up, to get it up, because his phallus has been taken down by Seth. 
drowned, the scriptures inform us, and laid on his side, they say, before his body is dismembered by Seth. And this diabolical act sets the Osirian horror cycle in motion. 